So next up, I believe we have our resident photographer giving us something, right? Parts, is that what's happening? Now Parth, believe it or not, this man's drawing like, ability is unseen, unparalleled. Hyper-realistic artwork that truly boggles the mind. I'm convinced you took pictures of these people, right? There's no way you could do this. Probably my second time. Right, right. You saw that. Okay, now I'm sure you all saw the performance at the Anatomy Memorial. Today, we'll hope will be just as good, if not better. And uh, the amazing artwork will pretty much speak for itself. So, Park, I'll let you show them your work today. Hi, everyone. Um, Hi, Park. Um, I wanted to uh, come up with something today. Uh, I'm not really a poet, and this isn't quite spoken word, um, but I think it's safe to say that at the very least it's a story. Uh, and so I'm going to be telling you guys a story today. Uh, and so, I, I mean, actually my drawing, I mean, photography is something that I've kind of shown to the class, and uh, I've done a couple of talks, but I've never really shown off my drawing uh, abilities, and so I wanted to uh, find a way to kind of uniquely incorporate that uh, into what I'm doing today. Uh, so I bought a big post-it thing and I have some sketches on that. Uh, and so we'll get into that. Uh, but I mentioned, uh, I mentioned that uh, this is a story, okay? So let me frame it for you. So it's 2013 and I'm actually, if you guys look behind that window, right over there, that's, uh, that's Bush Campus and that's where I was uh, as a sophomore. Okay, and it was a tough semester for me. Uh, I was taking like, uh, you know, orgo, and I was taking genetics, and I was taking physics. Uh, it was tough, but I had a lot of good friends with me at the time. Uh, actually, some of whom are in the room tonight. Uh, you know, we got some people who are in ones that rush with us. So, uh, you know, that made it a lot easier. Now, the one class that I could not stand more than any uh, was physics. And it wasn't because I didn't find the material engaging, because I really did. Uh, but it was because it was an 840 class. Um, and you know, I mean, us as M1s, I mean, we can't even be expected to go to our mandatory ICDs. How am I going to show up to my 840s, right? Um, so I kind of come disheveled, a little late to class, and I walk in, and the professor has some equations on the board. This isn't the drawing part, don't worry. <laughs> Uh, and so professor has some equations on the board, and I'm, you know, I had eaten breakfast, and uh, it was early, and I, you know, I just wasn't feeling it. Uh, I was in a fraternity, and I still didn't know my Greek letters, so I was even more confused. I, I didn't know what was going on. Um, but, uh, you know, I said, okay, let me, let me, let me humor him. So I sit down, and the professor goes, oh, the, the topic of the day uh, is light. He says, Visible light is electromagnetic radiation within the wavelengths of 400 to 700 nanometers. And like, all right, like a fun fact, I'm colorblind, so, <laughs> so like color in light is really just not that interesting to me in the first place. <laughs> but uh, I was, I was like, okay, professor, thanks. I'm gonna keep that in my back pocket. That's what I'm gonna take away from today, uh, and I'm gonna daydream. Uh, and so I did. And I daydreamed about what I think a lot of 19 and 20 year old boys daydream about uh, when they have the time, uh, and that's girls. Uh, but not just any girl, no, no, no. Uh, I was daydreaming about the one. I mean, this was, this was the girl that I was madly in love with. I was head over heels for her. And we had a thing going, I mean, you guys are really proud of me. She was a catch. Uh, <laughs> uh, actually, I mean, she, I mean, she is beautiful. Uh, do you guys want to, um, that, that's actually my first drawing, and I'm a little nervous uh, about showing you guys this, uh, but yeah, uh, why not? Um, so this is, um, this is the girl I'm talking about. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I mean uh, right, right? <laughs> Why do you, aren't you guys proud of me? Uh, can, I mean, can you say hourglass? <laughs> I told you, I told you, I'm a lucky guy. Um, so, 
So I was thinking about her, right? Uh, it wasn't just that uh, she had an hourglass for her body. It, it wasn't even uh, like an emotional thing. I mean, when I was with her for the first time, she kind of pushed me to, to be better, right? It, it was when I was with her that I kind of got into topics of self-development and uh, philosophy in sort of the general sense, right? Like, what's the best way to live your life? Uh, in literature, I mean, you guys know, like, you know, we're pretty big with the literary society here. Uh, that was all, you know, that was all for Miss Hourglass, you know, in, in as much as literature is searching and understanding the human experience. And so uh, a couple of months passed by, uh, and she ran out of time for me, and uh, she rolled on to the next guy. Uh, but, uh, but what had stuck with me was, was this light, right, this light that she left with me. And not in like the electromagnetic way, right? Um, in sort of more the poetic way. Uh, the photographer Robert Adams said, uh, "Within you is the light of a thousand suns." Sufi poet Rumi said, "If light is in your heart, you will find your way home." And that's the kind of light that I'm talking about, right? The real like poetic type, the type that brings that makes life worth living. So I continued on kind of these topics that I wasn't previously interested in. Uh, I came across the work of a philosopher. I mentioned philosophy was something that I liked. Uh, and this guy, Eric Fromm, he said that love is like looking into a mirror. And in that mirror, what you see is the self yet to be actualized. Right Within the other person, you see the best version of yourself, and they help bring it out. Now, I thought, that's beautiful. You know, that really made a lot of sense to me. Because that's exactly what my relationship with Miss Hourglass was, right? I mean, every time I was with her, I just I found the qualities that I needed to emulate and bring out. It was a really rare thing, I think. And then I came across the work, uh, literary work, of uh, easy now. Uh, literary work, right? Uh, this was the work by. Edith Wharton, she's a Pulitzer Prize winner and a novelist. She had a nice quote. She said, there are two ways of spreading light. This kind of poetic light. To either be the candle or to be the mirror that reflects it. And I like this. I like this a lot, actually. Because, see, to me, Miss Hourglass was a mirror because I was close with her. I could see. But to everyone else, she was a candle. I mean, everything she touched just became more beautiful. Just by being around, more life was put into the room. And so it meant a lot to me. But there was something that bugged me about uh, Edith Warren's quote. I couldn't quite put my finger on it. Yo. Yo, PT. Yo. Yo, PT. So at this point, I had been asleep in class for 35 minutes. Uh, <laughs> And my friend in the row behind me was trying to wake me up. Um, actually, uh, I mentioned that uh, I had a few friends here in the room tonight who are M1s. Um, my friend, uh, there's no chance. <laughs> Shout out, Harris Doshi. Uh, he's Mr. 100. He's known as Mr. 100 around here. He was uh, part of the ectopic base makers. Uh, Hirsch, he was up, he was taking notes, you know, those hundreds don't come easy, he was really working on it. Uh, <laughs> but he woke me up, uh, and I thought, you know, it was a bad luck, maybe I should pay attention. Um, and so the, the lecture on light was still going on, uh, and the professor ended it with a quote by Einstein. You see, because there was a big, a big dilemma in the scientific world for a long time. See, the electromagnetic light, some of the brightest minds in the world would do experiments and found that light functioned as a wave. While others did tests and found that light functioned as a particle. So they didn't know what it was. Is it a wave or is it a particle? And the way, the kind of conclusion that they came up with was that uh, light functions as both. Wave-particle duality is what they call it. And here's what Einstein had to say about it. It seems as though we must use sometimes the one theory of particles and sometimes the other of waves while at times we may use either. We are faced with a new kind of difficulty. We have two contradictory pictures of reality. Separately, neither of them fully explains the phenomena of light. But together, they do. 
And I like this. I like this a lot, you know, because I mentioned to you that uh, Miss Edith Wharton was kind of on my mind, and I, I wanted to say something to her, um, but I didn't. I didn't have the words, right? But my professor had just given them to me. So I walked over to Woody's, right, right next door, because I was, I was on Bush. Uh, I was on Bush, and I imagine, you know, if I had run into Miss Wharton and she was at Woody's. You know, drinking a cup of diesel. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> diesel is the name of uh, the coffee at Woody's. Uh, it's so strong, it's like jet fuel. Uh, you know, if she <laughs> if she was drinking a cup of diesel, what would I do if I sat down uh, and talked to her? And here's what I would say: I'd Say, Miss Warren, I think your quote was amazing. It was beautiful. See, but in science class today, we learned that electromagnetic light is split into two waves a wave or a particle. And after deliberating for so long, well, really they kind of figured out that it's only the one thing, right? Light is functioning as both. It's not either or, it's both. And Ms. Wharton, I really like your quote that people can spread light either through being a candle or by being a mirror. But just like electromagnetic light, I think your poetic light is really only the same thing. Because I thought, to Miss Hourglass, I thought to all my friends and family, the people that really light life up for me. And what I realized was that the best candles were also the best mirrors. Right? They, they had found something. It was, it was this vitality that they had. Right? <laughs> it was this vitality that they had. You see, what they had was an agreement with themselves to unapologetically be themselves. Whatever it is that they liked, they loved, they fostered it and they continued it. Whether it was against the grain or not, and for some people that's acting, for some people that's teaching, for other people it's making submissions to the literary society so we can post it on our blog. <laughs> you know, whatever it is, that's what you have to do. And that's how, that's why Ms. Wharton, there's really only one way of spreading light. And so this is a story of a reflection that I really learned. I wanted to share it with you as a way to not only thank Miss Hourglass, but also all the lights of my life, including everyone in this room. You guys mean a lot to me. And if I can do for one person what was done for me, it would be my greatest privilege. Thank you. All right, you've always come to talk ready. Right. <laughs> very well so very well done. Alright. So next up we have the closing act. The ultrasounds. We perform two songs for you. Seasons of Love and Hallelujah.